don't worry. I've got a list of people I want to talk. Don't worry. <laughs> it's all going to happen. Afshin, um, that, I mean, that point actually leads us quite, quite nicely onto this because we're talking about specific uh, cultural influences and how that influences how people practice a religion and maybe muddies the water. Look at countries like Iran or Turkey. Uh, they used to be secular countries, in, not in the irreligious <coughs> sense of the word, but secular countries where people uh, were very much, uh, women used to go about, they didn't have to cover their, they weren't forced to cover their faces. Many people find that uh, obscene and dehumanizing. Mm -hmm. And it, they were very different yeah. societies from how they are now. Look at Turkey now, led by a man who's a, he, you know, it, he's a creationist. Yeah. He thinks that all creatures were created just as they appear now on the earth. He's clamping down on human rights. So if you talk about Iran, what went wrong? I mean, to be honest, I'm personally tired of this dichotomy of culture versus authentic uh, kind of interpretation. We've been talking about this for the last 10 minutes. Almost every single contributor talked about the importance and the significance of culture and the ways in which our cultural particularities determine our interpretive uh, strategies. But not a single person talked about the importance of the political structure. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think the Muslim world right now requires a theological revolution. The Muslim world requires political reform. Mm -hmm. Because some of the ideas that we are talking about, I mean, we, we may waste actually many days and many weeks talking about narratives. This is the correct interpretation. That is a kind of incorrect interpretation. But this is irrelevant. The question that we need to ask is why in 2017, some of the ideas that even vast majority of Muslims regard as problematic, why they manage to find political agency, why they manage to be kind of effective, what paved the way for them to gain kind of this transformative kind of political authority. And of course, this is not about kind of competing perspectives. This is not about competing interpretations. It's about the prevailing political structure, which unfortunately unleashed these ideas. And I often actually compared it with anti-Semitism in Europe. Anti-Semitism, unfortunately, has been part and parcel of European history for a very long time. But you have seen kind of different manifestations of anti-Semitism in different historical phases. Yeah. Europe didn't all of a sudden become more anti-Semitic in, I don't know, in the 30s when we saw kind of the atrocities of the Holocaust. It wasn't a cultural problem. It was a political problem. The political machine which came the to political power institutionalization in Germany in, it, a way, yeah, yeah. in a way set the stage for those atrocities. And this is exactly what's happening right now. So we get, we get in the political and distortions. So, yeah. And this is completely ignored and we're wasting our time about, oh, this is a wrong interpretation and this is a correct interpretation and we're not paying attention actually to the cause of the problem and we are obsessively only looking at the symptoms of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent point. Right. <laughs> <laughs> is it, is Let me go, Chris.